Hey, what's up guys, Ollie here. So a few weeks back, I did a house tour video where I showed you sort of my living room and stuff. And I showed you the TV that I had and I mentioned that I'll be getting a new TV. I did actually order a TCL TV. However, that never ended up coming. For some odd reason, Amazon messed up their fulfillment and I just kept getting emails from them that it has been delayed. The date will come and then it's delayed again. Another date will come and then it's been delayed again. So I just got tired of it. I canceled my order, I ended up getting this whole new different TV. I ended up getting actually an LG TV. I ended up getting the model number. I have it written down here because it's quite long. The model number I got is the 55UK 6470 PLC. I don't know why TV manufacturers give their TV such ridiculously long names, but yeah, that's the TV model I got. So as you can tell, it's a 55 inch TV. I actually have the spec sheet here written in front of me. It has a 4K LED IPS panel. It does 4K active HDR. It has WebOS. Google Assistant is also coming to the TV later this year. It has two HDMI ports, a USB port, and some other various ports. This is a 2018 model. I wanted to make sure that I got a 2018 TV, just so I made sure that it's sort of pretty much up to date. So yeah, I've been using the TV for a week now. I wanted to share my thoughts. The design isn't anything to shout about, I don't think. It's pretty basic, it's pretty standard, it's made from plastic. It has quite a thick bezel, and of course I would love to have a thinner bezel. Who doesn't want thinner bezels on their TV? The TV itself is also quite thick. You can't see it until you really go around the side of the TV. You know, when you're sort of sitting in front of it or you're looking at an angle, you can't even tell how thick it is. It's only when you really look at it side on that you can see how thick it is. The stand that LG provide also isn't the sturdiest. It does shake a little bit, even with the lightest touch on the TV. I would have liked something a bit stronger, but I am most likely gonna put the TV on the wall anyway. So yeah, that won't be too much of an issue in a couple of months. The panel itself is fantastic. I definitely didn't think I would see much of a difference going from HD to 4K, but I could really tell the difference, especially when I'm watching 4K HDR content. When I was watching something like Altered Carbon on Netflix, great TV show, you should watch it if you haven't watched it already. Yeah, it just looks fantastic. The opening scene itself just looks so cool on this TV. And, you know, when you have the room blacked out and you just watch the TV and that's all you're focusing on, the quality is just amazing. You can really tell the difference in the shadows and the highlights. I would recommend a soundbar. Of course, most TVs with built-in sound really aren't that great. I'd always recommend a soundbar if you want to get good sound quality out of a TV. The one I'm using is a Sony one. I've got it connected up via optical. I am going to be changing it because I do want to get HDMI one and I am considering maybe a Dolby Atmos one mainly because Dolby Atmos obviously gives you amazing sort of sound stage. But yeah, I'll see, just got to look at what there is available. Watching the World Cup in 4K was also amazing. And LG provides a feature called True Motion. And what True Motion does is it basically fills in the frames in whatever you're watching. So for example, if you're watching a TV show or you're watching sports, which is in 24 frames per second, the TV itself will try to fill in frames between those. So it looks like you're watching at 60 frames per second. And it definitely does work. When I was watching the World Cup, it really felt like I was watching at 60 frames per second. LG has seemed to work out a system which somehow figures out what frames to put in between other frames. Don't know how they do it, but yeah, it works really well. The only issue I have with True Motion is that for some odd reason, LG have included it on every single picture mode which is just silly. I don't think it needs to be enabled by default on every single picture mode. You know, it's enabled on like standard mode, cinema mode, and the other various modes that LG offer. I think it should only be enabled in sports mode. So thankfully you can go into the settings and disable it, but it does mean delving into the settings just to disable true motion on something like the cinema mode. Because I think on cinema mode, you know, when you're watching movies or TV shows, they always look better in their standard frame rate of 24 frames per second. You know, I want that movie effect of 24 frames per second. The TV comes with WebOS, which is quick and easy to access by pressing the home button on the remote. WebOS is pretty awesome. It's quite snappy on this TV. I mean, it's not the fastest, it's okay. But I just like how WebOS gives you the ability to download apps such as Netflix, Amazon, and some other various apps that you can have on your TV, especially Plex as well. Being able to browse through those apps and know that they're always gonna be updated is great. The only criticism I do have is that when you're switching between apps and you're going through the TV settings, it's not the fastest. I wish it was a bit faster, you know, with it being a 2018 TV, I was hoping they would put a processor in it that's a bit faster. But yeah, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it still works. I just wish it was a bit snappier. 
The remote that's provided with the TV is pretty basic. It's not the most amazing or fantastically designed remote. It's just pretty basic, made out of plastic, nothing too special. I do like though how it has a Netflix and an Amazon Prime button. Having the Netflix and Amazon Prime buttons are great because they're the two services that I use most all the time on my TV. So yeah, being able to switch quickly between them is great. Another thing I use quite often, which is mainly relevant to UK people, is Freeview. So I don't have Sky or any sort of set top boxes or cable boxes or anything like that. I just use Freeview, mainly because I don't watch enough TV. Freeview on this TV is okay. It really isn't the fastest though. Browsing through channels and stuff can be quite sluggish. I wish it was faster, but yeah, it works. You can go through the TV guide. You can also go through Freeview Play and go through sort of the TV guide and look at older shows and stuff like that and see if they're available on iPlayer or an ITV player or Channel 4 or whatever else. As I mentioned, you really can tell the difference between HD and 4K content. You know, if you're someone who's on the fence, who's thinking about switching, but hasn't made their switch yet, if you find a good 4K TV like this one, you're definitely gonna love it because more services such as iPlayer, Netflix, and Amazon are coming out with more 4K content. And over time, you're just gonna get more and more 4K content and you can really tell the difference. You know, I've actually ended up going back to watch other TV shows on Netflix just because I wanna experience them in 4K, Altered Carbon being one of them. I'm, I'm probably gonna go back and watch Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul and other TV shows like that just so I can experience them in 4K. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, links in the description below and subscribe for more.